Hello folks and welcome. Linux Mint 21.2 Cinnamon. Oh no, it's not Cinnamon, it's XFCE. So anyways, the XFCE desktop has some new features in the file manager. But you may be aware that Linux Mint makes a Cinnamon desktop, also XFCE and Monte, and an LMDE5 also. That would be the Debian version of the Cinnamon desktop. But in today's video, I'm going to talk about the XFCE desktop. And uh, I am going to be talking about specifically the file manager, some of those new features you may or may not be aware of. So um, anyways, so let's go. I'm going to uh, be first mentioning that I'm filming in 1920 by 1080. You can uh, adjust your YouTube player accordingly if need be. I also am going to tell you I'm using a standard computer, not a laptop. And it's a tower computer with a standard keyboard and a standard computer mouse with a scroll wheel on it. If you need to know what kind of mouse I'm using, I'll just give that to you. It's a fairly inexpensive Logitech M585. And the keyboard, uh, I think it's the same series anyways. It's also a Logitech. But I'm not using a laptop is what I'm getting at. But there might be some touchpad features that may work for you on some of these tips and tricks. So let me first open up the file manager. And again, if you're brand new to Mint, a special welcome to you. So Thunar 4.18.4. Uh, Thunar is the file manager for the XFCE desktops. And 4.18.4 brings some new toys. Those new toys are highlighters and also colored text. So let me get this out of the way. What am I using for a theme? So my theme I'm currently using is Mint Aqua, Mint X Aqua, and the icon set is Mint Y Aqua. Anytime you make changes to the style and icon sets, may I recommend, may I recommend screenshots? Okay, your choice. All right, so I am going to first point out these little uh, widgets, if you want to call that, are called emblems, and I can strip those out, and you had those available previously. But you now have the capability of highlighting a folder. The theme is blue, yes, but this is a highlighter. So is this, and that, and the rest of these colors. You'll also notice the text is different colors on these things. Yellow, purple, yellow, another derivative of yellow. So let me strip all that stuff off. Right click on the file or folder. So you can do that to directories or folders and you can do this to files, it doesn't matter. So first of all, I'm gonna take away the emblem. It's just got limited uh, toys that you can toss on there. And then the highlighter, I'm gonna reset. So that's the file, what it looks like normally. All right, hopefully that's big enough for you. All right, so the thumbnail for the for the actual file is this size, so I need to leave it at that size. So let's click that to highlight it. Okay, so when I highlight the other ones, though, they do something different. The bottom half turns blue. That part at the bottom of these things. All right, so right click, properties. Uh, do you want me to use an emblem? Sure, why not? Let's do it that way. And also, let's set a background. How about a purple? or maybe an orange or yellow. Let's do yellow or orange. How's that? The text looks okay on that one. Um, like this one over here is yellow, so let me change that one out to something different. So um, let's see, since we're dealing with purple, let's see what red looks like. That may be too dark. How about white? That looks a little bit better maybe. Apply and done. I have black text, white text, yellow text, purple text. So yes, I can do this to a standard file too. And you can also add those little um, emblems also. Doesn't matter what they are. All right, same thing with folders. Don't like the uh, yellow. Maybe you want, um, let's say, green for go. Apply and close. What's the purpose of any of this stuff? Well, it's to find files and folders in a hurry by color, whether you do the text or whether you do the actual backgrounds. That's the sole purpose of that. All right, so some of my other tips, I'll show you the sizes of these uh, icons over here. 
uh, show you how to resize these multiple ways and also how to um, resize this window multiple ways. Let's start with the window. So the reason I picked this yellow thing here, this yellow mouse pointer, and I'll show you where that's uh, stored a little bit later if you're curious, uh, it doesn't come standard installed. And one of the features that I like about it is number one, it's a nice highlighter, and two, it will also point to the top of this box or bottom of this box for the purpose of me explaining this feature. So as I move it to the top, that's the resizer uh, symbol. So it's uh, the arrow is pointing to the top, meaning that's the top of my window. So for me to get this to work where I do this, I'm basically going to double click in here to resize this instead of that. You can certainly do it the old fashioned way, but I normally do this this way myself. Okay. Again, you may have never seen any of my videos. I have different ways of doing things. You can also right click and resize your way, system way. The size of these icons are determined by edit, preferences, side pane. I believe either 24 or 32 is the default. You can go ridiculous. Probably don't recommend this large, but you can certainly, I don't even want to go down to 1024, but maybe 96 for you folks that want, like big stuff. I will go to 64 and leave it there. The behavior of this file manager is set for, not your behavior, the file manager's behavior is set for double click. I don't prefer single click on any file manager. So all of the stuff you're seeing is being done with that action. All right. Resizing these icons are done multiple ways. Right click, click zoom in and out and normal size. You can go to the view menu and do the same. Click, click, click for zoom in and out and normal. You can also hold down your control key and hit plus, plus, plus to make it bigger, bigger or hold down the control key on your keyboard and hit minus 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 to make it smaller smaller or control zero so holding down the control key plus 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 holding down the control key minus 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 and then holding down the control key zero I didn't want to go through all the steps it just takes way too long now what I'm about to show you is I'm going to substitute the plus the minus and the zero all in one shot but I'm still going to use the control key. So I'm using again a standard computer mouse with a USB based computer mouse with a scroll wheel on it. So I'm going to use the scroll wheel to resize icons, but I need to press down and hold the control key to do this. Pressing down and holding, scrolling forward, scrolling back, scrolling forward, sc scrolling back, and then I'll scroll forward kind of in between. This comes in handy when you're looking at thumbnails for pictures. Scrolling forward, scrolling back, scrolling forward, scrolling back. Once you get into the size that you want, let go of the control key and these will scroll normally. Okay. So right click, set as wallpaper. You can do that with any image. If your digital image has other information, so I will um, first right click on this one. It doesn't have any other information. But this one does, and that's a perfectly legit file. 15.jpg.jpg. So that frozen tundra. My wife took this picture. Right click, properties, image. Now you can see that's done with an iPhone 10. You've got uh, focal length, shutter speed, ISOs, and all the other goodies. Okay, scrolling back, scrolling forward. All right, clicking on Mr. Mushroom's spacebar. So this here is. X viewer. You can also do um, slideshow images and uh, hitting the space bar will allow you to cycle through your photos or wallpapers. Alt and F4. All right, let's go back to these files for a second. And I'm going to open this PDF up. And I am going to hold down my control key and scroll backwards to make this extremely small. It almost looks like a black dot. Holding down the control key, still scrolling up to make these large. 
and somewhere in between. All right, as I scroll through the pages, I see this over here. And I want to focus in on this area right here. So I'm going to point my mouse pointer tip around about there, hold the control key down and scroll forward. And you'll see that kind of jump around a little bit because it's trying to center this. I'll scroll back out and then I'll point down here and scroll in. And you'll see that it, it's pretty much trying to hold that in view as I scroll out and in. So if I point to this area down in, your, in the corner, not so much. But in either case, it should help you out zooming in and out of stuff. Alt and F4. All right, so this is a standard text file, even though it doesn't have an extension. So if you're fairly new to Mint, uh, if you're sending this off to a Microsoft machine or Macs, you probably want to, well, rename these things with an extension like a.txt. But this file is a text file nonetheless. It's done with XEd. It's a lightweight text editor. There are many text editors, editors out there. So this is the very top line. So I'm going to hold the control key down and scroll forward to make that text bigger. Then I'm going to let go of the control key and scroll normally. And then I'm going to use Alt and F4. Just a couple of little tips here. Okay. So I think I am pretty much done. I do have other videos on my YouTube site for all kinds of material. Alt and F4. Thank you for watching.